Example 159 tech. Four methods of blending penicillin were compared in a randomized block design. The blocks are blends of the raw material. Below the table of yields, a partial ANOVA table has been provided using the statistical software called Minitab. Complete the ANOVA table and test for differences between the methods and the blends. Use a 10% level of significance for both tests. All right, so we have a table here, which provides the yields from each of the methods and blends. So we have blends, which appear to be the blocks, and then we have the methods A, B, C, and D that they're comparing. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look then to see what the ANOVA output tells us. All right, so this display is very easy to read. They tell us that we had four levels for the method, A, B, C, D, and the blends had five levels, one, two, three, four, five. They then provide the ANOVA table. There's a lot of things missing. We need to fill in those question marks so we can make sure that we can read our ANOVA output. All right, so let's start with the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are pretty easy here to fill in because the methods, it tells us that we have four levels. So the degrees of freedom for that will just be four minus one, or in other words, three. For the blend, it's the same thing. We, we're told we have five levels, so it'll just be five minus one, or in other words, four for the degrees of freedom there. The error will skip. We'll jump to the total to do that first, because from the total, we can then derive the error very easily. So we can get the total degrees of freedom in two ways. One, you can actually see from the diagram how many different measurements were taken, right? There are four columns, right? A, B, C, D and five rows, so that's a total of 20 values. If you take one away from there, you get 19. So the answer for the total degrees of freedom must be 19. There's another way, though, that we can determine this, and that is the fact that since there are four methods or four treatments, right, and there are five blends, it's just four times five, or 20 total measurements that they would have made because for every method, we have to pair it up with every blend. And the reason why that's the case is because for every level of method we have, so in other words, A, B, C, D, or every method we have A, B, C, D, we have to pair it up with the blends. So it'll be A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5, and that's five, and then B will be B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. That produces 10 total measurements, and then so on and so forth. When you pair up C and D, we get another 10, so you end up with 20 total. So the degrees of freedom for the total experiment is just 20 minus 1, or 19. Okay, now the error degrees of freedom is going to basically follow the same formula that we always have for total, right? So the total degrees of freedom will be equal to the sum of the method degrees of freedom plus the blend degrees of freedom plus the error degrees of freedom. So if we want to figure out what the error degree of freedom is, we simply subtract the method and the blend away from both sides, right? And we will end up with what we're looking for, which is the error degrees of freedom. So the total degrees of freedom is 19. If we take away 3 from that, we get 16. If we take away 4 from that, we get 12. So the answer for error must be 12, and sure enough, we can check that 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 12 is 19. So that's how we fill in the degrees of freedom. All right, now we're missing one of the adjusted sum of squares. We're missing the error sum of squares. That one's not given, so there should be a question mark there. Um, but we're going to fill that in now. So it's the same idea again. It's that idea that the sum of squares for the total has to be equal to the sum of squares for method or treatment, right? Plus the sum of squares for blend or blocks in this case, right? Plus the sum of square for error. So if you want to solve for the error sum of squares, you simply subtract these two guys away from both sides, right? So we end up with the idea that SSE will be equal to the total minus the SS treatments and the SS blocks. Okay, so we'll have 560 minus 70 minus 264, and we get 226. All right, then to get the adjusted mean square, we simply need to divide the degrees of freedom into the sum of squares here. So 70 divided by 3. So 70 divided by 3, and we get the answer 23.3 repeating. Okay, then we'll do the same here. We'll do 4 divided into 264. So 264 divided by 4, which is very nice because it'll go in evenly 66 times. And then we'll put 12 into 226. And we get 18.83 repeating. Okay, good. And then 
Last but not least, we have to come up with our F test stats, right? So we're going to put the MSE into both MSB and MST, and each one of those will produce the corresponding F test statistic. All right, so let's start by putting the MSE into MST to get the treatment's F statistic. So we'll have 23.333 divided by 18.83333, right? and you'll get 1.239 approximately. All right, so we'll have 1.239 for the first test stat. Let's do the same for the MSE into MSB to get the block test stat. So we'll have 66 divided by 18.8333, and you get 3.504, 3.504. All right, let's consider the p-values then for the table. So we have 0.33 for the p-value for methods. Well, again, if we're using a 10% significance level, so if alpha is equal to 0.10, that alpha is less than the p-value of 0.33, which is the p-value for treatment, right? And that means in this case that methods are not significant. In other words, the method of producing the penicillin doesn't seem to matter. It seems that all of those methods, A, B, C, and D, produce statistically equivalent yields. In other words, in other words, this data doesn't allow us to say there's a difference between the methods A, B, C, and D. It seems to be that they're all equal. Okay, let's take a look then at the second p-value in the group, the p-value for blends or the block variable. So that one is significant. That's small, right? 0.04, that's about 4%. And when compared to 10%, the p-value is small. So the p-value for blends or blocks here is significant. So it means that the blend of the raw material that you use to produce the penicillin does seem to matter. So it doesn't appear that all five of the blends are the same. In other words, it does seem to matter which blend you choose, right? So when you're producing penicillin, the blend of raw material actually seems to make more of a difference than the method you use to actually produce the penicillin itself. And that's it.